Hey, hey, hey. Peace, peace, peace. Hold on one second. Bean Soup Times is on a mission to create dope content. Bean Soup. Bean Soup Times is All on right, a mission to sisters, create dope content. All right, brothers and sisters, what's going on? This is your brother Tori Mahomes. Sean Michelle's homemade ice cream is the uh, only place to go when the ladies crave right delicious old-fashioned homemade well. ice cream. Their vanilla well tastes just like grandma used What's to up, make Africa, with Sister over 35 Africa, flavors, Africa, 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 flavors, all made with the freshest oh. ingredients. Kathy has never had banana pudding ice cream this good. It's homemade ice cream peace, the peace, way you remember. Sean Michelle doesn't upset your stomach. Enjoy it in store. Take it to go. Sean Michelle. Fall in love again. First time customers, buy one, get one free. Bean Soup Times is on a mission to create dope content that entertains, educates, and empowers the black community. We keep our ear to the ground. We ask. We report to you. We help black people to share their message. We promote real dialogue. We provide a platform to help give voice to the voiceless. We educate you on how to shop smart. Our passion is to inform you about black events, businesses, organizations, and entertainers. We are black owned. We are black Chicago. We are the award winning Being Sue Times. All right, all right, all right. What's up, brothers and sisters? Peace and blessings. This is your brother, your friend, Tori Muhammad. Man, I'm so excited and um, enthused about today's show. We got a wonderful guest coming back on. She's been on uh, one time in, in the recent future, in the recent past, brother. And now she's coming back in the uh, recent future because as soon as she gets on, it'll be the future because it's we're in the past right now. <laughs> man so brothers and sisters while we're waiting for her to come on listen many of you uh throughout the years i've been getting requests uh, i've been getting uh calls and emails and text messages when people are looking for people to do business with and while we know and are definitely in the buy black wave there is another avenue um that we want to highlight and that is black owned muslim businesses uh, many people who are uh muslims as well as people who want to support who want to do business with black muslims because they have a good track record they know the integrity the expertise um, they know all of the actual, uh, what can I say? This is, there's a striving, right? There's this real striving to be better, uh, than, you know, we've been in the past. And so those of us who have come into a certain level of knowledge, um, and are a part of a certain group of people. Uh, want to always exhibit the best and promote the best and be the best. So here we are, you know, with a new directory called the Black Muslim Business Directory, uh, Black Muslim Businesses. If you have a Black-owned business and you are a Muslim, <laughs> if you fit both of those categories, then, uh, hold on, my uh, client, my, uh, person is trying to get on which email right if you are a part of you know wanting to be in this wave and in this movement i'm sorry i'm, I'm getting distracted trying to send the text message so our guests can come on 
Uh, but you know, we want to we want to help direct those people to you. We want to help you to find these incredible black Muslim owned businesses. And I'm discovering so many myself. It's absolutely amazing. Do you know we have some incredible uh, civil rights and litigation attorneys in the Nation of Islam uh, who are black Muslims, of course. Do you know we have a international tax expert? This sister can help you not only with local taxes, but if you want to set up a business in another location, another country, and you want to do business in certain places and certain, she'll make sure that you're following all the laws of that country and that you're paying whatever taxes is due in that country. I mean, absolutely amazing stuff. So we're excited about what we've been able to do with her. Uh, and we want to expose you to her. So we're excited about that. I am going to bring on our guest right now. It's, it is a little delay, but I hope you all can see it and see me. And we're going to bring her on. Bree, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. All right. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Hey, hey, hey. So, um... Where you at? You need a little, more, a little more light on you. All I see is sunglasses. Oh. <laughs> I mean, not just sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. no, okay, let me see. I'm in my office space. Maybe right, I can you, get you put light right in front of you. Is that better? I want people to see you. They got to see you. <laughs> that's a little slightly better, but not a lot. No, there, there you go. There you go. Yeah, that's better. That's better. <laughs> All right. Make sure people don't think I'm just talking to a black silhouette. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it be cool though? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> yes, how you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. I yeah, went to work out this morning, so I feel energetic. That's and what's up. We got to get workouts in. Huh? I said, that's what's up. We got to get those workouts in. Yes, especially with everything we're going through. You need some way to release. So, yeah, it's really good that's to just right. get up, that's especially right. in the morning. To start your day off working That's out, right? right. <laughs> and then and especially before, you know, right? And especially before Saturday, you know, before I eat a lot, you know, gotta right, right. Work, so work tell us about Saturday, <laughs> right? Tell us about Saturday. <laughs> so Saturday is multicultural cuisine food pop up. So it is the first food pop up for activists and you. And we are doing this because as we all know, a lot of all of us have been affected greatly by Corona, but especially caterers. And I am blessed to work with amazing food caterers that have great service, great food. And I wanted to do something to showcase them. So I thought, you know, why not? We haven't really had any food events going on this summer with everything going on. So, um, and I had an opportunity to do the event in the outdoor space. So I was like, why not? So that's what we're doing this Saturday. It'll be a Mexican cuisine, Asian cuisine, uh, possibly pasta. We have cocktails for kids and adults. Um, and we have Southern desserts. Well, I'm, so a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an adult, stuff. but I want, the, I want the kid cocktail anyway. You want the kid cocktail? I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kids like something special to drink. They get tired of apple juice and Sprite. So Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so, this sounds amazing. It's gonna be it's gonna be two days or one day. Or it's gonna be one Friday. day. Um, okay. Yeah, it's gonna be Saturday because well, Sunday's supposed to be it's supposed to rain really bad, so mm -hmm. I didn't want to like push it. I know I you know I say rain or shine, but let's be honest, who wants to come out in the rain? So, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so it's just gonna be all day Saturday, from twelve to six. The temptations did. <laughs> <laughs> You got a point. I want to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> they feeling the bad though. It was having a bad day. They lost their woman. <laughs> oh, right. You probably got sick after too. <laughs> right. But that's good though. Yeah, you definitely definitely want to be out there. Now that it's getting a little chilly, you know, when it's warm outside, you might want to brave it. But the temperature's right. dropping, so you got one day. It's gonna be some good weather, and yes. uh, folks to come out and enjoy those. That's a nice variety of food you're gonna have. Yes. Um, I mean, a lot of 
just thinking back on food events I've been to, we um, a lot of food events kind of have the same food. So it's just this is a good opportunity to show the creative chefs their talents that they're not just oh I just do barbecue or I just do jerk like no I do other things and I'm good at it you know like so catering service I know I was talking to one of my caterers and he was just like I am tired of people ordering the same stuff for me he's like I know it's good but I cook I've taken so much time and gotten all these skills into cooking so many other cuisines. So this is a good time to educate other people about them and their skills, as well as just food in general, because we have a lot of food options here in Chicago. But how many of us keep going to the same places every time we go out to eat or we cook the same food? So this is a perfect opportunity to engage and learn and, of course, be safe with Corona. Right, right. That's wonderful. So uh, where is it going to be? So it's going to be at an outdoor venue. It's uh, 5529 South Indiana. So we have, it's a banner there as we speak. So you can't miss the event. Um, and it's gated off too. So it'll be open. It's a free event. Uh, of course, we are taking donations as a nonprofit organization um, as we been trying to raise money for essential workers. So that's what the funds are going towards. So, but yeah, that's the location of the event. And it's a ton of parking. So you don't have to worry about paying for parking all over. No free parking. Don't have to pay. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good. Yeah, there should be plenty of parking over there. And uh, so, what else is going to be happening? You got the food going on. Is it going to be music or? Yeah, so we're going to have music. Not uh, too much going on, just because we don't want a lot of people staying in the space, just with everything going on. So we will have music. Uh, we'll have sessions where you know, just music playing, all varieties, and then it's going to be like every hour, just playing like Unity songs. I like to call it. So like Cupid Shuffle, Electric Slide, something that we all know how to do and bring us together. And we just, you know, do it together. So we're going to do that every hour. And that's pretty much going to be it. Um, it's going to be some tables, but the idea is for it to kind of be on the go. Like I said, so people don't stay for an hour or two. Just like I said, with everything going on, it's just not safe. So that's we right. just want to, we want people to come out, but we're doing everything that we can in our power to, for people to enjoy the food, enjoy the vibe there, but still like be safe and unfortunately not stay the whole time like we're used to staying at events right right man if we can just combine the electric slide with the overall black movement we'd be in a better we'd be yeah. in overnight yeah. <laughs> yeah, like seriously like all jokes aside yeah, the, DJ, the dj gotta run it <laughs> right like can we please just like you know make that happen you know y'all cast especially in chicago you play. I remember growing up, they played Casper Slide on uh, WGCI, and I've literally seen people pull over and get out their cars and start dancing. So if oh, only we right. can have that same energy towards things that we need to do as a culture to make us existing better, that would be amazing. That's right. That's right. So, but you love what you do. You love how you bring in folks together consistently, even during the pandemic, uh, creating opportunities for people and so talk a little bit. People have watched you on a show before, know a little bit about the nonprofit, but you mentioned you're doing this for a nonprofit. So talk a little bit mm -hmm. about Activists and You and yep. uh, what that mission is about. So Activists and You, uh, we're about promoting humanity and positivity. So we do what we can to be a part of the solution of um, we ideally we want to eliminate, but we're just going to say decrease <laughs> um, um, any like negative uh, discrimination or d any discrimination against age, gender, um, educational, social justice, and uh, sexual orientation. Because um, we, it's just, you know, we all have one life to live and we just need to push more motives about things that, how we live to make us happy. So we try to do uh, different things, it's been kind of hard with Corona, but we're still trying to do the best that we can to execute our pillars, our four pillars of action, art, advice and apparel by pushing these messages to promote people to be positive to live and and be comfortable in the skin they're in as well as creating opportunities for other like-minded individuals so just showing that you know all of us together we can create amazing you know we can create amazing solutions instead of everyone trying to do everything on their own that's not what it's about if for example um, like I said earlier with multicultural cuisine, the idea is to educate people on different cuisines. The idea is to showcase Chicago caterers. So that's what it is. It's not a caterer. It's not um, one person. You know, it's all of us are affected somehow within the same 
target audience. So we are the audience. So what are we doing, you know, to be the solution? What actions are we taking to show that, okay, this is a problem and this is what we're doing to decrease it. So that's a lot of what we do. A lot of what we try to do. I'm um, here in Chicago. Oh man, that's beautiful. And, um, is there, can people do RSVP for the event? Is there a website they can go to? And yes. Get information? Yes. So of course, um, our social media, we've been advertising on activists and you, um, activists and you all platforms as far as Facebook and Instagram. So the link is there. Um, the event page is up on Facebook too. Um, or you could just go to Eventbrite and register. So registrations have been going really, really well. I'm so excited. So um, definitely uh, register if you can. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's a free event. We It's just a suggested donation. You don't have to. We would love if you did. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's just how you register for the event. But if you don't, you can still come. But we just like to, you know, kind of know a number so we can tell the caterers how much food to prepare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. So, you know, tell me, what are your thoughts about this uh, upcoming election? <laughs> ah, you know, this election is it's stressful. That's one thing for sure. Um, I did, um, I did, I did a video yesterday just saying, like, because I know a lot of people are stressed out about it. We constantly see it in the news. We see it every day on social media. Like, there is notifications about voting and stuff. Every platform you go to, and it's, it's honestly, it's a bit overwhelming. Um, it's definitely important. I do push the fact that everyone get out and vote, especially because for minorities, they're coming with all kinds of excuses, especially depending on what state you're in, to find reasons for us not to vote. And depending on who you vote for, um, always in politics, I feel like it's always a lesser of the two evils. Um, I don't really feel like it's about the people as a whole, which is really sad because, I mean, we keep America going. You know, if we don't work, if we don't go out to restaurants, if if we don't get on social media, I mean, how much, what is the value of America, to be honest with you? So it's sad that, you know, the people that we have running doesn't see that and they just see what's in it for me. Um, it's, it's a really challenging election. It really is. Because it's like, who who has, especially as a minority, as a black woman, in America, who has my interests at heart? Because um, I'm, I'm tired of having to fight, you know, as a black woman for every little thing. Like literally every little thing, it's a struggle. So I don't know, it's, it's really hard. It's really hard. I mean, I'm, of course I'm going to vote because it's, you know, my right. And it's at least some effort that I can do to make a change. Like. Yeah, I know like a lot of people feel like, well, I'm not sitting in the White House, like I'm not in the Senate, so I can't do anything. But it's at least a step, regardless on how you feel. It's still a step that, you know, we all get out and vote. So I don't know. I'm still conflicted. But sometimes I do have to tune out just because it is heavy information. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of heavy information. Yeah. You know, we we don't we don't play the political and the politics game right yet. You have people with certain interests and they push mm -hmm. certain candidates because they know they're gonna get something in return for it. Right. But there are certain groups who know how to play the political game where it really doesn't matter who's in office. Mm -hmm. Right? They're gonna get their agenda pushed through. And they got a few people over here that's that's supporting this candidate. Right. Yeah, supporting that candidate. And whoever wins, they gonna have somebody at the table. Right. Um, uh, but you know, I think it's time for us to make our own table and not I be agree. continue to be so concerned about. You know, what I'm saying it's like it's like it's like a, a, a angel of light trying to play uh, the devil's game. <laughs> yes, yes, literally. You lose the devil. Hey, if you in hell, you got to learn how to get out of hell because the devil's going to win in hell until, yep. until we turn it over. I you mean, know? we definitely need another option. You know, like long, long ago, everything was black and white. But somehow red, purple, green, orange, blue came out. We need that because this Democratic and Republican it's, it's not for us. 
It's not the right. it's not the it's not the answer. It's not the solution. It's a huge part of the problem, especially when you start doing your research. You know, it's like um, a lot of people think oh, democratic is the best. It's, it, I mean, if you do your research, in my opinion, it's about the same as the Republican Party. They just put next to, okay, we like LGBT or we like Black Lives Matter, but the, it's really not for us. So yeah. it's, it's about Democratic time we need other options. Democratic Party, Republican Party, we have been entertainment at the party. We bust right. the buds and wash the dishes at the party. Right. We've really been invited to the party. No. And not I'm a guest. Yeah. Not at all. It's like literally, and it's sad because we live in a time where we just do what's trending to be seen or to get credit. We don't we don't follow what we really believe in, what we're really passionate about. And politicians, a lot of politicians show that a lot. And it's sad because like I said, it's at our expense. Like we have one yeah. life to live. It shouldn't have to be this tough. <laughs> no. I spent time uh, working for a member of Congress. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to go to D.C. every week mm -hmm. and would sit in the um, the cafeteria, you know, lunchtime, whatever, go to the cafeteria. And it's people who work on Capitol Hill and mm -hmm. it's members of Congress that go in there and eat. Now, they had a special area that we could go where it was just them and go eat in a different different space. But the general cafeteria, they would go in there and. I guess because everybody was either a staff person or a member of Congress, they would talk a little bit more freely. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting there with, you know, a, a colleague eating and, um, and we're in earshot of two members of Congress talking. And they're talking about how they change their message based upon who their audience is at that time. Mm -hmm. So when they're in the black church, they're saying one thing, when they were yeah. LGBTQ, they saying another thing, yep. justifying their vote, right? Yep. They with white, you know, constituents, they saying something different, but still justifying whatever their vote was. So, for example, if it's LGBTQ issues, this is before marriage was passed, right? Mm -hmm. They talking in the black church, but well, I'm not for that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, you know. With, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Right. Talking to the gay community, I voted against it because it wasn't strong enough, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to get better legislation so that you can really have systemic change, right? right. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's still voted the same way, but they telling different people different reasons why they voted. Yep. And when one told the other one why and how they did that, you should have seen how they both laughed. They laughed like they was two children that had heard a joke for the first time. They was they was almost rolling down the floor, just tickled at how intelligent they thought and how slick they were being um, and talking to different groups of people. Mm -hmm. And I say this is what the American people have. Yep. You know. Exactly. Um, exactly. And they were. They were pretty popular, you know, elected officials. They weren't, you know, they 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 had the people in the palm of their hand. They they won multiple so for decades. It's so sad. Yeah. So, uh, but it is what it is. But we're glad that you activists and you and the things that you're doing in the community and the things that uh, will help develop systemic change and bring folks together for dialogue, for good food, and for um, action, proactive action. So we yeah. love what you're doing with, um, you know, our uh, essential workers and that piece that you're doing. So we hope that that continues and you continue to get support for that as well. Yes, definitely. Um, I've been asked to do different things within politics. Like I've had different opportunities. I actually went to D.C. for the march. So myself and another team member, we went. So um, I definitely, you know, get what you're saying. And that's why I like with activists and you, we. I mean, I, I know, I mean, we all know that we could be bigger, we could be doing more per se, but to stay at a local level and just make change here, that's what we like, because that's where it really starts. It's trying to get people to understand that 
don't get discouraged by politics, you know, because like I said, it is a lot of negativity and it is really heavy to keep watching and engaging in it. But there's there's still certain things that we could do within the black community, within the LGBT community, within the brown community, within our just small actual communities like Roseland or like Inglewood or Lincoln Park. However, there's still power that we have within our neighborhoods and we're not reminded of that, which is why we feel voiceless and powerless. We feel that we can't do better for our kids. We feel that we can't offer support to people that we see are homeless or jobless. We still can. We don't need Trump or Biden to make a change right here in our own home. So yep. activists and you, that's like, like I said, Corona has been a struggle, but no matter what, we always going to make, you know, some effort to keep pushing those messages because <clears throat> it matters, you know, progression is those small progressions that really get you the results you need and not thinking about, you know, the bigger picture, which is who's going to be the president. Is it going to yeah. be Biden? Is it going to be Trump? Because depending on which one, well, that means that I shouldn't put, I don't have to work anymore. No, you still have to do the same things. You still have to survive. You know, yeah. and if you want your community to be better, you still have to make effort for your community to be better. The work that will never stop, no matter who's the president, even yeah. if Obama was to come back, it still will never, the work never ends. So it's just yeah. that reminder of, putting in effort, even if it's two hours a day or even a week, you know, you just start off small and we all work together as a community for the greater good of whatever purpose it is. Like I said, yeah. whether it's for the black community, brown community, LGBT, whether it's for our kids, whether it's for the elderly, that's what we need to be constantly reminded of. Be. Yeah. You know, I watched and was part of an organization that brought a they weren't even a lawyer that, but they were studying. They was in law school. Mm -hmm. That law student put together the legislation. And then that legislation was taken to a state rep, Illinois, Illinois delegation, and said, here's what we want to push. Here's, here's why it's important. Here's what we believe. And here's what can be done about this issue. That legislator read it, agreed with it, and then he became the chief sponsor of it. Then he went and got Republicans and Democrats to support the bill, and then the bill was passed within two years. Mm -hmm. And then it became law. That was a grassroots movement and organization that didn't just go to the elected official and say, this needs to be changed. What can you do about it? We need to be doing, no. They, they put the work in to actually make it happen. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of stuff that would be better. Now, it, voting didn't have nothing to do with that. Is that my point exactly? You know, and now they did support that person to get them there but then they kept doing the work, like you said, to get it to the next level, right? If we get person in, okay, what legislation do we want then? What laws can be changed that would help make things better? Right. You know, that's that's one thing to look at. But um, I, I am I'm frustrated and tired with people saying go out and vote and go out and vote, and then they think that they've done their duty for no the and the cause no. because. They cast one ballot. No. That's that's like firing one bullet in the war. Yep. Well, I literally. shot my bullet. Here, literally. That's it. So I'll go got, home. You got that's 10 it. of your we head. Won. <laughs> right. We won. I fired it. We won. Right. <laughs> I, my job. I fired my one bullet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Came exactly. One bullet. Yeah. So it's anyway, it's we appreciate you. Thank you for coming on the show again. Yes. Definitely. Uh, you, you, you want to be a co-host sometime? We can talk about that as well. I would love to. I mean, I hopefully I'm not going over time, but I just want to give kudos to you because you are such a support in the solution and everything going on. Like literally, Tori, my all the time. Like you, you do so much. Like your heart is just amazing, and we need more people like you. You know, giving people the opportunity and spreading the knowledge and the word of everything that's going on. So I just really want to commend you. Like literally, I feel like me personally, I can never thank you enough for the support that you give, and it's always genuine. Like, I just wanna. <laughs>
with you. <laughs> I just really want to say thank you. Like literally, it's amazing what you're doing. Like well, you please know your heart, but never. And I know I'm probably. I mean, I know this that it's probably no point in saying this to you, but still, you know, never give up and know that you always have support. I appreciate that. I received that. And I thank you for it. And um, and that's why we connected and bonded because you of that same spirit. You you helping the community. You ain't gotta do that. You can just be focused on making your money and taking care of you. Uh, but you out here doing stuff that helps to uplift the community. So like-minded people, the more we get together, the more of us work together and not only put the good message out there, but then build business that generate yeah. those bullets you know because one activist i said that's a multi-millionaire he said money is like bullets right and you need bullets in a war to help mm -hmm. do what you need to do yeah or so exactly. we finance and we can pay our own way to stuff yes uh, the more yeah. better off we're gonna be so yeah. we can buy that legislator uh uh law student to make the legislation mm -hmm. right we can pay for people to get out the right to vote and do all this stuff, then now we're in a better position. So, but yeah, but we definitely show us over right now. And I appreciate you and love you. And uh, let's keep the work going. Yes, we will. Love you too. Right. And I will definitely be in touch. All right. All right. Peace out. All right. That's the show for the day, brothers and sisters. Listen, I got to run. My uh, grandmother needs me today. So we about to go make a run for her. And uh, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Keep the fight up. We're going to close out hollering at our people and uh, Sean Michelle's. and not hollering at them, but letting y'all see the commercial for Sean Michelle's homemade ice cream. Their sponsor, of course, uh, Dan Soul Food and Cafe and uh, Brown Sugar Bakery and uh, Chateau, Chateau's Men Grooming Kit. So those are all our people. We appreciate them. We love them. And uh, we'll be talking to you all again real soon. And until then, you know, you stay up, you keep the peace, and uh, don't get that vaccine. Don't count no matter what, who says it, who talks about it. We are not getting a vaccine for COVID-19 um, unless we have our team of, of scientists and epidemiologists who can look into it and know that it's real. So y'all heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the stipulations around it. If we're forced to take a vaccine, it's a declaration of war. So stay away from it and be strong. Sean Michelle's homemade ice cream is the only place to go when the ladies crave delicious old fashioned homemade ice cream. Their vanilla tastes just like grandma used to make it. With over 35 flavors, all made with the freshest ingredients, Kathy has never had banana pudding ice cream this good. It's homemade ice cream the way you remember, and Sean Michelle's doesn't upset your stomach. Enjoy in store or take it to go. Sean Michelle's, fall in love again. First time customers, buy one, get one free.